Don't miss out on all the conversations on Breakfast in the Desert. I'm sure everyone's lost for words because all we could do yesterday was just shout and shout and shout and scream. The Brave Warriors came on that field with a mission. From now on, we should not fall back. We should now say, how do we do it on this? Breakfast in the Desert, weekdays, 6 to 9 a.m. Passing and the death of uh, President Hage Gengop, who passed away this particular Sunday, or this past Sunday rather, which uh, essentially brought to life the story that's on the front page of the Namibian newspaper this particular morning. And that uh, has a headline titled, Kanjo wants next swap of presidential contest reserved for men. As the former cabinet minister says he believes the position of Swapo party president at the upcoming extraordinary congress should be reserved for men in order to achieve gender balance. Now, he did uh, speak to Timo Shihepo uh, uh, earlier this week and uh, they had a discussion on this particular conversation. Timo does join us on the line just to give us a bit more context on uh, the conversation between himself and Ikanjo. Timo, to you, thank you so much for making some time for us in our social media reacting uh, quite loud. Loud yesterday and frantically on uh, the headline of the story that the Kanjo wants presidential contest reserved for men. Uh, this is in the swap of party. Perhaps you can just start us off by giving us a bit of context on this particular story. Yeah, as rightly you have put it, um, uh, it was expected that uh, social media would go about because the public wasn't necessarily aware, but some members uh, internally knew that uh, um, uh, President Ginkel's death would cement the cause for extraordinary Congress that uh, uh, Netumbo's camp was avoiding. Remember last year, there were calls for an extraordinary Congress, uh, which would then give um, a stamp of authority to say, OK, uh, Netumbo will then be our presidential candidate, or are we going to have uh, a new one? But that didn't happen. And uh, it was almost like it was going to be brushed aside so that uh, Metumbo just become uh, the presidential candidate for Swapo. But now this death has brought to life uh, what uh, the other people who were not in Metumbo's camp who have been calling all along to say, let's have an extraordinary Congress. Now, uh, Jerry Akanjo, this is a man who hardly speaks to the media, let alone speak to journalists for 20 minutes. Uh, but... Uh, when he does speak, uh, he shakes up things, as in as in this case. And now we, we know that while there was smooth transition at State House, the same can be said uh, at, the, at the Swapo party level, because uh, uh, it, it's out now. Um, many people, also speaking to, to many people in in, 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 in Swapo, they, they have indicated that uh, they, they are going to put up their candidates in the head for that uh, presidential position. Now, speaking to, to, to Ikanjo, did, did he mention that he would perhaps want him, uh, want to put his hand in, in, into that position? He, he didn't necessarily say it, uh, but the feeling is that he will. Um, he, his words were, we, we, we have to wait for, for the central committee to, to call for an extraordinary uh, Congress. And the Central Committee has to ask for, for, for nomination as well. Then until that time where he is nominated, he, he's not really going to say, he's going to put his um, uh, name in the head. But the feeling, talking to him, mm. uh, he, he, he will, he will uh, put his name in the head. So, 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 Timo, just for context for the listeners, as far as we're concerned, there hasn't been an extra. There hasn't been an announcement for an extraordinary congress yet. Yet people are just pushing forward. People are just speaking about it, including, of course, the likes of Jerry Kanjo. Yes. Um, uh, if you remember on Tuesday, we we wrote a story uh, highlighting that uh, it was an exclusive, actually, that uh, the Politburo me- met at the Swapo headquarters. Mm. Um, that was on Monday. Uh, and that uh, meeting is the one that will then decide to instruct the Sendra Committee to then call for an extraordinary Congress. Of course, then speaking to, to sources and also party leaders, they, they don't want to give much in terms of what was said um, uh, at that meeting. But the, the hunch is that an extraordinary Congress will be called 
within uh, three months after Gengov's death, unless, of course, Swapo has to go against its uh, own constitution. But if we are following the constitution, that ordinary, extraordinary congress has to happen within three months, but be, uh, between April and May. Then. Speaking about uh, going against its own constitution, the, 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 the biggest issue here is the issue of gender balance and gender parity, isn't it, uh, Timo? Uh, as we speak right now, there are well, three leaders within the top four, of course, because the position of the presidency have, has been left vacant since the death of uh, former President Gengop. Uh, there is a gender imbalance of some sort now. It's uh, two females, four, one male, essentially. Uh, this system could be sort of daunting and haunting for Netumon and Daitwa if, if, if there's another woman that's elected as vice president. Oh, oh, oh yes. Um, oh, definitely. It, it would have been uh, easier if uh, 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 President Hagi Genkov was alive. Um, I think it would have been clear for, for, for Netumbo to just uh, roll out and uh, do national campaigns the way they were doing it. But now uh, um, it's no longer clear. And for probably for the first time, really, this zebra uh, system is going to be tested uh, to the core. And uh, the reference is already there. Uh, remember, um, during the 2022 Swapo Congress, mm. Deputy Minister of Urban and Rural Development, uh, Evelyn Noises, uh, who is now the current uh, 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 Deputy Minister of Urban and Rural Development, had to make a way for two male candidates because uh, she had beaten uh, uh, one of the candidates and she 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 had to be removed from the runoff because it was it was two male and and and, and one woman and uh, 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 Evelyn beat one of the, the men and it was supposed to be now a rerun between uh, uh, current deputy secretary general uh, that is Herunga and uh, uh, Evelyn to contest for that position but she was told to withdraw because had she beaten uh, uh, Herunga then we would we would have had uh, three women in the top four position. Now, obviously, uh, they are making reference to that to say, listen, this has happened already in 2022. Uh, Evelyn even wanted to go to court, but she was told uh, by the Swapo uh, uh, people uh, to say, please don't go to court. Uh, it's going to make the party look bad. Just withdraw. It's fine. So now the guys are coming out and say, okay, this happened in 2022. Um, now the, the, the issue is that we have already two women in the top four and only one man. So we need to fill the other quarter with uh, a man. Uh, and the, the other issue is that if, in, in this case, um, uh, Natumbo has to, to resign uh, from her vice presidential position if to contest for the presidential position. But the risk there is that if she loses that uh, presidential uh, uh, position, she can never go back to the vice presidency. She will also become an ordinary member. And in this case, she will be the vice president of the country, but not in the top four of uh, of the party, as in case uh, as uh, now the current president, uh, Nangolo Mbumba. Timo, can we expect to anticipate uh, uh, more developments coming in the next few days? I saw that you did uh, reference uh, Netumbo Nandin Daitwa here, but she hasn't uh, uh, she hasn't really said much. She's keeping her cards quite close to her chest. You've also spoken to the SG of the party, also not saying much. Uh, what are we anticipating here? Yeah, um, uh, rightly so. Um, Netumbo perhaps didn't have to say much uh, because uh, there are people within the party who have more, uh, uh, not necessarily authority, but in a better position to speak in terms of the procedures and rules and guidelines that uh, uh, govern uh, the SWAPO constitution. And that is the Secretary General and also the SWAPO spokesperson. SWAPO spokes- spokesperson hardly speaks uh, uh, Adley goes out there, uh, probably not the best person to be uh, a swap 
spokesperson at this uh, difficult time. But in terms of going forward, um, I expect to 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 have a conversation with, with the SG. Uh, we had a conversation with her. Uh, she 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 didn't really want to to put it out there uh, in the media, but. Uh, I, 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 we still expect her to give us some sort of uh, response to what has been said now, and also because it's in the public, and the public and the members of SWAPO would obviously need uh, some sort of uh, uh, position of SWAPO um, going forward. Of course, it's too, still too early uh, because uh, um, the, the late president is still not uh, buried, but. Um, it, the development they keep going, and uh, I, I assume that the members and the public would want to know uh, uh, swap opposition in, in this. We will uh, uh, dig. Uh, we will. It's our just to bring the information to to our readers and listeners. So uh, I'm sure there will be some development uh, going forward. Indeed. Well, I guess we'll see where this all uh, goes to and how it pans out. Very, very interesting developments happening within the Swapo Party. And of course, this has a direct impact on uh, the structure of the cabinet at national level. But for your time this morning, Timo, we do thank you so much. We'll be waiting for more pieces from your side. Thank you, John Golan. Cheers. Timo Shepo, the co-author of uh, the story that, uh, well, is a splash on the front page, a Kanjo wants next swap of presidential contest reserved for men. Timo Shepo and Lasse Dianare on the story. Well, can we are still unpacking this particular issue of uh, the front page story of Jerry Kanjo wanting the next swap of presidential candidate or contest rather reserved for uh, men. This uh, has a lot to do with the succession matrix of the party, especially now that uh, the seat of the presidency has been left vacant following the death of President Hage Gang of this Sunday. To continue unpacking the story, we are joined by political scientists on the line. That's Rui Chitende. Rui, to you, a very good morning. Good morning, John Colin. Good morning to your listeners. Thank you so much for making some time for us this particular morning. Your immediate interpretation of Jerry Kanjo once again uh, having a lot to say about the succession matrix and uh, the leadership of the party. Uh, yes, well, John, we live in a democracy and any member of the ruling party, especially its former leadership, has a right to contest for any position that becomes uh, vacant. However, it is important to note that uh, Jerry Akanjo has lost similar attempts at the Congress of Swapo. For example, the first one in 2012, he lost to then President Kain Kop by a huge margin, 574 votes garnered by President Kain Kop, and Jerry Akanjo only got 153 votes. Again, in 2017, of course, that Congress was marred by allegations of bribery as a consequence of the Fish Road Saka. These are the numbers again. Kainkov Gannett, 577. Jerry Akanjo, 153. The 2022 Congress, uh, he did not even make it to the list of nominated candidates. So it tells you something that he came last after candidates like Kapofi and so his attempted race was cut short and he pursued the legal road to be on that ballot as a VP of SWAPO, a potential candidate. So in short, Jerry Kanjo has scored a hat-trick in uninterrupted defeat, attempting to ascend to the echelons of the party structures, more specifically vice president or president. So we shouldn't think for one second that he will not throw his head in. I can almost put my head on the block that he will. Mm -hmm. But given where we are now with the current political intricacies and metrics that are currently unfolding, not only at state level, but also at party level, I can put my head on the block that Netumbo Nadindaitua will defeat any contender who wishes to challenge for the position of party president. The reason why I'm saying is that If you look at the members of the Central Committee, the members of the Political Polit Bureau, it is populated with Netumbo Nandindaitua loyalists. Unless something dramatically has changed since November 2022, which I doubt. Has there been any changes in the 
branch executive or the conferences that will take place? Has there been any changes in the district level? Has there been any changes at the regional level? I doubt that. If you ever want to take it a step further, the person that stood the chance of defeating Nadine Daipua was uh, Sara Kukongela Amadila in 2022. Mm. And what were those numbers? Natumbo got 491. Sara got 270 votes. Poamba Shif Feta came at a distant 91 votes. So even the closest contender was defeated by almost half of the votes. So where would this confidence of potential candidates who think that they can defeat Nadine Daipua come from? But again, politics is unpredictable, so we'll see how that plays out. Politics is unpredictable indeed. And what uh, Jerry Kaj is essentially resting upon is uh, the issue of the gender balance within the leadership of the party. I'm sure you heard me speaking to Timo Shihepo about that, just trying to give some context for and to the listeners regarding this. Um, can we po- foresee this being a, 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 a possible thorn for Nandin Daitwa, especially if, just if, uh, a woman is voted in as vice president of the party, making it very difficult for her then to contest um, as 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 president for the party. Uh, look, John Collins, even the sort of party constitution, uh, I'm not a lawyer, but in my view, basic English, if you look at Article 11, it says that the Congress shall elect officials and frame rules for its proceedings provided that during the election of the president, the vice president, the secretary general, and the deputy secretary general, the Congress shall ensure that two of such positions are held by women. It's not saying by less than two women or more than two women. So it's quite ambiguous Mm. for me, looking at it from that point of view. So any person that is able to interpret the law, who's able to interpret the Constitution, might even argue to say, look, that just basically make provision for a minimum requirement of women that are supposed to be in the top four. It can be more. It can even be four women that are in the top four. So what is the problem here exactly? But I think the reason why that argument has been spin over time is because of the provision in the very same Constitution that speaks about the members of the Central Committee. The Central Committee that one is very clear. There's no ambiguity because it clearly states that uh, the delegates to the extraordinary Congress or a Congress during this election to the members of the Central Committee, Congress shall ensure that women constitute 50 percent. So there's no ambiguity there. It further goes on to say that this shall be achieved by adopting adopting a zebra style election system. In other words, Position number one, if it's a man, the next one should be a female. Mm. Like that, in that order. So uh, I'm a bit skeptical in terms of the constitutionality thereof and what are the chances of him succeeding with that approach. Indeed. I I, I bring that question up because uh, essentially him and and everyone else has been using the reference of of 2022, that exclusion of uh, Evelyn uh, Evelyn Nawas Tayele during that 2022 SOPO Congress, which raised concerns about, you know, that that, that gender imbalance point, because at that point there were already two women within the top four, um, which were the minimum, as the Constitution does say now that you just read out. The third one would have been Evelyn Nawas Tayele, but she was unfortunately... um, uh, Essentially told to 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 remove herself from contesting by then uh, the 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 presiding officer and Jerry Kanjo did come out and actually say that look th- this guy made a mistake anyway but we have to go off that as as a precedence uh, for 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 the next upcoming uh, congresses. Mm. No, absolutely. Uh, but again, uh, rules can be written and they can be unwritten. But in serious political parties or in a serious democracy. If you look at the way the succession matrix happened at state level, it was smooth because it was quite clear about what needs to happen in the event that the head of state is unable to execute his constitutional obligation as a consequence by the yells, the death, or whatever the case might be. That's very clear. That's why the transition was smooth. But at the party level, you need to understand that the way that law is written there is not quite clear to me. Even as a political scientist, it's not clear. 
because it rooms it lo- it, re- it leaves rooms for ambiguity it leaves mm. rooms for holes to be poked in the constitution so i think sopo should really consider having a revised uh document in the form of their supreme law for the party because the way things are going we will not have a smooth congress going forward not only the extraordinary congress that is expected to be happening in the next three months but even going forward in 2027 for example and, and and I'm glad you made that point of the Congress uh, expected to happen in the next three months because there also have been questions being asked. I'm sure you went through the Sopo Party Constitution. Does it actually state that uh, the extraordinary Congress has to take place within three months if uh, a position of, of, of presidency is vacated? Uh, yes, it does. And it also stipulates that uh, should there be any financial constraints that prevent the Central Committee from conducting an extraordinary Congress, they may adopt a different formula in terms of its wings and its affiliated uh, structures. But in terms of the vacancy occurring, that one is very clear. There needs to be an extraordinary Congress. Just before we do let you go, Rui, generally, just the way we're looking at it now, with spe- especially with elections being this year in November, November might seem far away for some people, but for some people it really is tomorrow. How how vital is this extraordinary Congress for SWAP and how vital is it for them to get it right in order to stand uh, the chance that they have now already at elections? No, it's quite uh, pivotal. Not only for SWAPO, uh, of course people will care, they will be interested because it's currently the governing party. It has been dominating our policy-making process for the past 33 years, so we understand that. But it's quite vital in the sense that the party is having inherent challenges. It's having structures and processes that are being questioned by its own leadership. It's in a state of uh, perpetual oppositional politics within itself. You can see what has happened last year at the various rallies attended by Natumbo Nandindaitwa and Sofia Shaningwa, saying that there should be no call for an extraordinary Congress because it will damage the party. It was within that vein that they didn't want Natumbo Nandindaitwa to be challenged. But I can guarantee you there will be contenders. Um, we can even expect the likes of Pohamba Shifeta to come, uh, Jerry Akanjo to come. But unity will be key because if you are not united as a political party in an election year, what does it say about you if you want to or you are sent to the corridors of power in terms of state power? But one thing is very important here, John Collins, is that the party in its current form, people are ambitious because there's now a vacuum. President Kankop is no longer there. At least while he was there, we knew for a fact that he was only going to resign in 2027. Now he's no longer there. So the race is open for everyone. But we need to ask ourselves also a key question. Where would the confidence come from for people like Jerry Akanjo to constantly gun for this position? It could be that Jerry Akanjo is motivated by the fact that he pushed this anti-same-sex law. So it could be that people whisper things into his ears. Or it could be that Jerry Akanjo is motivated by the late poet and civil rights activist when she remarked that you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so that you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can still come out of it. So we don't know, but uh, I expect this contest to be open. There will be pretenders wanting to unplug Nandin Daitwa from the presidency. And let's assume hypothetically Nandin Daitwa wins the position of president of the party. It means the VP automatically becomes vacant. Who will be the contenders there? Will it be Prohamba Shifeta? Will it be Jerry Akanjo? And if yes, chances are they would want to be uh, endorsed as the presidential candidate in the next elections. Sure.
Well, so much to uh, look forward to, so much to think about really when it comes to the uh, Swapo succession matrix in terms of the uh, vice, in terms of the presidency position, but now potentially also the vice presidential position. But we, uh, we will be waiting for more developments and I'm sure we'll reach out to you when we do get some for your time this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, John Cotton. There, well, just really unpacking uh, what uh, could potentially happen within the Swapo party, what the constitution of the party says, how ambiguous it really is, and uh, really the the you know sort of unrelenting uh, uh, emphasis that uh, Jerry Kanja has been putting on the leadership points, leadership battles over the years, uh, not only now with 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 Nandin Daitwa going to vice presidency since 2022 Congress, but really since he has been uh, challenging for uh, leader, top leadership position within the party, taking it all the way back to 2012. It's very, very interesting to see how all of this will pan out. This particular story uh, by Timo Shepo and Elias and Dianale is a must read, a must say today. Uh, of course, uh, there will be a development from this. Uh, Sophia Shaningwa did tell uh, Timo Shepo that uh, she will try or told one of the journalists actually that she will try and reach out to them again uh, sometime this week or soon uh, just to answer the questions they do have for her very 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 interesting stuff i must say don't miss out on all the conversations on breakfast in the desert i'm sure everyone's lost for words because all we could do yesterday was just shout and shout and shout and scream the brave warriors came on that field with a mission from now on we should not fall back we should now say how do we build on this Breakfast in the Desert, weekdays, 6 to 9 a.m. Informative. It is now investigating the events that unfolded at Sokob Moon Secondary School on Wednesday last week. Accurate. It's the job of now journalists and everyone to say, are the factors affecting meat corporation, are they internal? Entertaining. But uh, right now, we're about to ride the wave of entertainment together. The Salibos Madame is just me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know how to introduce <laughs> myself. <laughs> All right. Breaking news, as we know, the police and the city of Bento's private contractors are busy demolishing shacks. Desert Radio, The Bold Boys.